Hello and welcome to the very first edition of the Dinosaur News Center, where I will be keeping you up to date with the latest news, discoveries, and various topics related to dinosaurs. I will also introduce you to one new dinosaur each episode, and maybe even answer some of your questions, to the best of my knowledge. Now then, let's get started with the news, shall we? Our first discovery is from out of Mexico. Mexico isn't exactly a country known for its abundance of dinosaurs, or ceratopsins. But now a new champion for the longest horns has appeared in the state of Coahuila, Mexico. Coahuila Ceratops Magna Cuna of Mexico has horns 4 feet long. That's a full foot longer than that of Triceratops. It's possible that this animal is even bigger than Triceratops in general. And this is what the animal might have looked like. The question of whether dinosaurs were warm-blooded or cold-blooded may finally have an answer. Scientists have found a way to tell the temperatures of extinct animals by measuring the clumping of rare isotopes of carbon and oxygen in the bones and teeth of fossils. First, they tested it on contemporary animals such as an Indian elephant and a Nile crocodile. And the results are pretty accurate, give or take a degree or two. Next, they tested it on a woolly mammoth, and the results were 38 degrees Celsius, which is about what they had expected. They went further back to 12 million years and tested it on a rhino and an alligator, and the results were about the same as their modern descendants. Well, I'll bet you're just dying to know what the results are for dinosaurs, huh? Well, we don't know. We're told to keep our eyes peeled for the next year or so, and that's really all we could do. I'll be back with a follow-up when the results arrive. Now on to Transylvania, where a 115-year debate can finally be put to rest. Magyarosaurus Dacus is now officially a dwarf titanosaur. And by dwarf, I mean as big as a horse and probably twice as long. The scientists at the University of Bone... Born... Bonn? That really famous university in Germany were able to look at the bone structure and comparing them with different samples. They found the animals to be 95-99% to grown. One of the theories as to why this animal is so small is that during the Cretaceous, Transylvania was a small island in the middle of the Mediterranean. It was probably a combination of lack of large predators and the lack of food source that kept these animals so small to prevent them from eating themselves out of a house and home. From out of Texas comes a brand new discovery, Texacephalae langstony. This dome head is about the size of a medium-sized dog and is a new genus of pachycephalosaur. I haven't found any images for this animal, but it should look similar to other pachycephalosaurs. That's all the information I have on Texas cephalae, but don't worry, in the future, I will go back and revisit this dinosaur when we have more information. This of course applies to all of the new discoveries. And that's all the news we have for today. Now then, let's move on and introduce our very first dinosaur. For the first episode, I think I'll introduce you to Dinochirus. This dinosaur was discovered in Mongolia and lived 70 million years ago in the Cretaceous period. It was a very large predator, about 40 feet long. This theropod had arms 8 feet long and armed with 10 inch claws. To put you into perspective, this animal has arms as long as the leg of an average Allosaurus. You're probably wondering, what could this fearsome predator have looked like? Well, are you ready for it? Okay, it's a really big ostrich, I think. We really can't say for certain, because all we have are an enormous pair of arms. Right now, it's widely believed to be an ornithomimosaur, but the arms themselves are fairly primitive and lack some of the more advanced features of the ornithomimosaurs. Some have suggested the arms were used for hunting, while others pointed out the claws were fairly blunt and were probably used for defensive purposes instead. Some have even compared the claws to that of a sloth, and suggested it might have climbed trees. Um, I don't know about you, but this animal is probably 40 feet long, as big as the average Tyrannosaurus. I have a hard time imagining it climbing trees. Heck, we can't even say for certain whether Dinochirus was a carnivore, an herbivore, or maybe even an omnivore. I picked Dinochirus for our very first episode because I wanted to show that the field of vertebrate paleontology is always changing. New discoveries are made every day. What's right today could very well be wrong tomorrow. Even the American Museum of Natural History has outdated information on Dinochirus. 
I know. I was there last year, and it says it was related to Therizinosaur. That theory has been widely disregarded. But who knows, in the future, that theory might even make a comeback. I picked Dinochirus to show that even the museum can have incorrect information, and so can I. And you can bet that in the future, there will be information out there that will make old episodes obsolete. And when that happens, I'll be there with an update. Unless I miss the news, of course. Alright, let's go check out the mail and see if I can answer some of your questions. Derek J asks, why did all dinosaurs have phosphorescent teeth? It's not just their teeth. Their entire skeleton can glow in the dark because of the radioactive minerals in the ground. In fact, the seismosaur skeleton was prepared in a dark lab with black light shining on it. This made the fossil glow in the dark and helped the paleontologists discern the fossils from the sandstone. Dokio asks, Are the tones on the skins of dinosaur replicas realistic? How can we know what pigments were in their skin if all we have to go on are the fossils? That's impossible to answer, I'm afraid. Even with skin impressions, colors cannot be preserved in fossils. All a paleo artist can do is use their imagination or look at nature for inspiration. Grafter asks, what is your stance on dinosaurs having feathers theory, and why? I don't have an opinion on this matter, but it is a fact that we've discovered dinosaurs with feathers, and we've discovered feathers on dinosaurs we've known for years. Bob's 99 asks, A T-Rex, a Pterodactyl, and a Triceratops walks into a bar. What happens? The Triceratops is in fact a hallucination by the very drunk T-Rex and the Pterodactyl. We all know there's no such thing as a Triceratops. After a few more beers, the T-Rex and the Pterodactyl got into a brawl. The Pterodactyl took off his disguise, and he is revealed to be Terry Bogard from Fatal Fury. He grabs the T-Rex and he literally beats him into the ground. And that's why there's a T-Rex skeleton in Big Bear stage in Fatal Fury 2. And that's all the time we have for today. If you want to send me questions, there's an email address at the end of the credits. This is the Illiterate Scholar signing off. I'll see you guys next episode.